there, my name is Isabel G. Flux. I'm a photographer and Sigma ambassador in Los Angeles, California. As you may be aware, we've all been instructed to stay indoors, both for our own health and for the well-being of those around us. But just because you're at home does not mean that you need to put your camera away on the shelf to collect dust. Being at home actually presents a wonderful opportunity to brush up on your photography skills and really exercise your creativity. And what better way to do that than with our furry best friends that we are cooped up with. So I'm here to give you five tips on how to photograph your pets while at home. Tip number one, your settings. Although photography really is in the eye of the beholder, the equipment that you use and how you use it really factors into the images that you're able to create. Over the years of being a pet photographer and teaching about pet photography, I found that oftentimes the qualms with shooting animals really boils down to the settings that you're using. Regardless of the camera that you use, and please refer to your camera's manual because the name of these settings may differ between brands, You'll generally want your camera set to burst mode. What burst mode is, is the camera takes a multitude of shots during each shutter click. This is where the camera's frames per second or FPS really come into play. Frames per second tells you how many images that camera can take per second. So when you set the camera to burst mode and you hold down the shutter, that many images is taken every second that your finger is down on the shutter. The reason you want to take a burst set of images with animals is that most of the time they're just not going to cooperate. I mean the animals blink, they look away, and they have spontaneous movements and you're able to capture all of it when you set your camera to burst mode. The next setting you're going to want to look at is your autofocus settings. The autofocus you're setting you're going to want to set your camera to is called continuous mode. Between brands, it can be continuous focus. I believe with Canon, it's called AI Servo. And what that does is the camera will continuously refocus on the subject that you set it to. So as your animal is moving around, the camera will continue to hold that focus and very, very quickly keep refocusing on each movement. However, you do have to remember that the camera is not intelligent and it's not thinking for you, so you do need to keep an eye to make sure that the focus is actually locked on your subject. The combination of these two settings is really the secret to capturing really, really remarkable animal photography. That's also how a lot of sport photographers capture their subjects as well. You're essentially mimicking sport settings. Even with your animal just portraits or them just sitting down, you still never know what they're going to do. So it's good to keep those settings on at all times. Next is the lens that you decide to use. The lens that you're using really does affect the aesthetic quality of your images the most, even more than the camera does. And for me personally, when I photograph indoors, I really gravitate towards shallow depths of field. And shallow depths of field is when your aperture is quite wide. Not only does that let in a lot of light, but it really creates a beautiful separation between the subject and the background because anything that is not on the focus plane is out of focus. So the way that focus works is, again, it's an invisible line called a focus plane. And whatever subject is sitting on that invisible line is in focus and whatever is not on that line starts to blur away depending on the kind of aperture that you're using. My favorite aperture to use is an f1.2, which is one of the widest apertures you can actually get in a lens that is an autofocus lens. And my lens of choice for the most part is the Sigma 35mm f1.2 for mirrorless systems. Now shooting an f1.2 creates truly dreamlike and mystical shots. It's something that allows you to not have the location factor as heavily into your image, which allows you to shoot really anywhere in the house and be totally fine. Half the time you might not even know that it's in your house, depending on how you frame that shot and where you take the photo itself. Now, if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, you can also try shooting with a much deeper depth of field. Say an aperture of f8, 12 f22 because at that point more things will be in focus in your shot and as such the image becomes a more storytelling shot it becomes a bit more documentarian um, everything that's in the frame itself actually factors into the image itself and it's something that a lot of photographers actually don't practice very much and having your pet 
at home and lounging around in your house is a great opportunity to tell a story about what your pet is like and really express their personality. Tip number two, tired pets make the best pets. The age old saying of a tired dog is a good dog has quite an application in pet photography because the more exhausted your animal is, the less likely they are to protest what you're doing. So if you want those beautiful portraits or those serene laying down shots, make sure to play with your pet prior to doing the photo shoot. And I mean really play with them. Exercise them, get them to run around, get them to the point where they really are just too tired to argue with you. <laughs> Tip number three, toys, treats, and noises make the ears go up. Because images are static, they don't tell the whole story. So if you have a pet that likes to keep their ears down, even if that means the animal is actually happy because in dogs, sometimes ears going down is actually equivalent to them smiling, in an image, the animal can look distressed or upset. As such, you want those ears up, alert, and perky. The easiest way to do that is, depending on what your pet likes most, to use toys, treats, or noises. Ready? Stay. Stay. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. Stay. Stay. Good girl. Good girl. Get it, get it, get it. Tip number four, get creative with it. There's so many ways that you can use photography to showcase your pet's quirks and characteristics. Take this time to practice thinking outside the box, whether it's using unique compositions and perspectives to incorporating props and other such sets into your photography. Tip number five, don't feel limited by your location. You can use post-processing to turn any space into something amazing. So if you do feel limited by your home or your backyard, remember that you can adjust colors and add special effects in post-processing in order to breathe a new life into the space that you're using. 